name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, God always provides the church with special means of grace in every age to meet the evils and spiritual dangers of the time. In our age of unbelief and apostasy in which love of God and neighbor have grown cold, God has provided a remedy. True devotion to Mary is taught by St. Louis Marie de Montfort. In consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary is revealed by Our Lady of Fatima. The unique role played by the Blessed Virgin Mary was foretold by St. Louis. There will come a glorious era in which Mary will be the ruler and queen of many hearts. It is in the heart of Mary that the world will again find true fraternity. It is by the heart of Mary that it will obtain pardon and mercy from God. It is with the heart of Mary that the new city will be built in truth, justice, and charity. It is for the heart of Mary, for its honor and glory, that some of humanity, grateful and free, will in the near future increase its manifestations of love and filial gratitude. My dear and beloved in Christ, the practice of true devotion to Mary is the most effective way to sanctify our souls and to persevere in the faith. Our Lady's mercy will help lapsed Catholics to return to the church. She will strengthen the remnant faithful in their warfare against the enemies of the church and their souls. At the same time, our Heavenly Mother will urge them to purify their souls from sin by prayer, penance, and amendment of life. Sinners find in Mary a loving and compassionate mother who helps them rise from their evil habits and to make reparation. For she is the dispenser of God's mercy and mediatrix of all graces. Father Galifet, a Jesuit priest, stated that devotion to Mary consists of three things. First, reverence and account of her exalted dignity as mother of God. Second, confidence in her power and goodness and imitation of her virtues. And third, a tender and filial love of her. If we daily venerate and invoke Our Lady, showing our reverence, confidence, and love towards her, we will obtain countless graces and blessings, including final perseverance. We read in the lives of the saints that they gave their tokens of love and devotion to Mary. They visited her shrines and churches and images, daily prayed the rosary or other prayers in her honor, fasted on Saturdays, often taking only bread and water, gave generous alms in her honor, and, of course, imitated her virtues. My dearly beloved in Christ, after the fall of our first parents, God revealed his plan of redemption and the final defeat of Satan when the woman, Our Lady, would crush his vile and evil head. In the latter times, Satan will instigate dangerous snares and cruel persecutions against the faithful, preparing the way for the reign of Antichrist. Our Lady has been given special power by God to overthrow Satan, reveal his deceptions, and protect her children. Our Blessed Mother knows so well that the roots of the evils which afflict the world today are the spirit of modernism and secularism, which hold the minds and hearts of a great portion of mankind chained to the things of this world and make them utterly forgetful of those that are eternal. To rescue souls from this slavery, she would have them renounce the spirit of the world, amend their lives, draw them to herself, and have them assist other souls by their prayers and penances, so that they may, in turn, draw them to her divine Son. In the merciful designs of God, the Immaculate Heart of Mary is destined to bring about a renewal of faith and fervor in our age of atheism, agnosticism, and religious indifferentism, and to restore harmony and peace to soul sick, a soul sick strife-torn world. Our Blessed Mother herself has made this 
now and at various times, particularly at Fatima, where she requested a special veneration of her Immaculate Heart to this end. My dearly beloved in Christ, a devout servant of Mary will never perish, said St. Alphonsus Maria de Liguori. The demons hate devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and try to prevent it. Through a possessed person, Satan said that two classes of persons do him much harm, those who spread devotion to Mary and those who wear the brown scapular. He once cried out by the mouth of a possessed person, O oh, scapular, how many souls you have snatched from me and from hell. Our Lady herself promised that whoever dies wearing the scapular will be preserved from the fires of hell. The scapular symbolizes our consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. St. Bernard asserts, the demons in hell tremble when they hear the name of Mary. St. Alphonsus draws this comparison. When Holofernes planned to capture the city of Bethulia, he first cut off the aqueduct by which the inhabitants received their supply of water. In like manner, the evil one first does his utmost to rob souls of their devotion to Mary. And after he's deprived them of this, this channel of grace, he can easily bring them under his power. Satan used this tactic both during the Protestant Revolution and also at Vatican II. He endeavors to rob both the just and sinners of the devotion to the Mother of God, or at least to weaken it. For if anyone fails to practice this devotion, he is in great danger of falling into sin. The reason the evil spirits try to rob souls of this devotion is because they know that if they love and honor her, sooner or later, she will save them. No matter how weak we are or how habitual our sins, we must continue to pray to Our Lady repeatedly to be delivered from our sins, amend our lives, and remain in the state of grace. My dearly beloved in Christ, Father Faber said, thousands of souls perish because Mary is withheld from them. He listed four reasons why souls fail to grow in sanctity, and one of which is lack of devotion to Mary. According to Father Faber, the spiritual remedy needed for our times is an immense increase of devotion to the Blessed Lady. But remember, nothing short of an immense one. Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary produces in a faithful soul a true knowledge and contempt of self and a great confidence in her. As a result, we approach our Lord without excessive fear and pray to him with great trust. If we fervently venerate our Blessed Mother, the evil spirits cannot harm us either in this life or at the hour of death. She will take under her protection and under her mantle those who honor her and strive to imitate her virtues. Every soul on earth resembles a ship on a storm tossed ocean. It sails out under the turbulent seas amid temptations, storms, and the troubles of life, where so many perish and sink into the abyss. If we frequently turn to Our Lady, the star of the sea, we will reach our final destination, heaven, safely. According to St. Francis de Sales, the Blessed Virgin is a secure harbor of all who travel on the sea of life. Those who look up to this heavenly star will be preserved from the cliffs and precipices of sin. My dear the beloved in Christ, St. Louis Marina Montfort has written, God wishes that his mother should be at present more known, more loved, more honored than she has ever been. This will take place if they consecrate themselves to her and live that consecration. Then they will see clearly, as far as faith allows, that beautiful star of the sea. They'll arrive happily in harbor, following its guidance, in spite of the tempests and pirates. They will know the grandness of that queen and will consecrate themselves entirely to her service. They will experience her sweetness and her maternal goodness. 
and they will love her tenderly like well-beloved children. They will know the mercies of which she is full and the need they have of her help, and they will have recourse to her in all things. In closing, while in ecstasy, St. Francis of Assisi saw a great ladder ascending to heaven, at the top of which stood the Blessed Virgin Mary. By this vision, he was shown that to reach heaven, he must climb the ladder, which represents devotion to Mary. Adiesum per Mariam, to Jesus through Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.